So I guess the best way to just attack this video is to talk about what has happened over the last 24 hours. MMA guru made a joke about some fat journalist chick. UFC's darling Nina took offense to that, wrote an essay going after him, calling him all these disgusting words and names. So then MMA guru responded to that essay and absolutely roasted, cooked and scalded her to a crisp, like done. And we talk about bad PR all the time on this channel. And then she went off and displayed exactly what we've been talking about and made another response video. And one of the things that stuck out most about this response video was that she needed to drink a glass of water. Her mouth was clicking like two Africans having a philosophical conversation in a bar. But besides that, it was extremely delusional because all the points that MMA Guru had made, she tried to refute them. She talked about analytics and the numbers are there, go check them out. But she was ratioed. She got smashed on Twitter, on YouTube, across the board. And you would think because she is a UFC plant that somebody working in the PR department would have put a hand on her shoulder and said, listen, stop, back out, you're done, you're cooked. But that advice never came and she responded again. And as I said, it was delusional and cringe and very worrying in terms of where we are with the UFC. We call it out all the time. We call out the identity politics that has been infused into the organization, which is a detriment to the sport. And if you actually look at Nina's content, does it do anything for the sport and the legitimacy of the sport? To have some chick with a big chest hanging out with Sean Strickland continuously to gain more traction in her career, laugh at his misogynistic jokes, laugh at his racist jokes, laugh at pretty much everything that he says, never question it because it helps grow your channel, fall and cream all over the likes of John Jones who beats his wife and has cheated repeatedly within the sport. You don't call out these guys because it helps grow your channel. So basically you're a grifter, right? You are a grifter and you took it upon yourself to white knight for the fat chick. And let me tell you, because it's kind of slid under the radar. A lot of people are talking about Nina versus MMA guru and they're not talking about Amy Cap at all. And given the fact that I've been making content on how identity politics is destroying every facet of our society, I know who Amy Kaplan is and I've seen her shit before. And when I tell you that she is a lunatic, you gotta like just do the research yourself and go have a little look at her tweets. I've pulled up some of her tweets. They're disgusting, they're vile, they're anti-American, they're anti-white, and they are exactly in line with what I call out all the time from the likes of Anik, from the likes of Rogan, from Bisping. All all these guys who decided to white knight for Nina in the last couple of hours as well. I see people talking about John Anik, Michael Bisping, Dylan Dennis. How pathetic is it that you need Dylan Dennis to come and rescue you? I don't know about all these other guys, but as soon as Dylan Dennis realizes what type of shit this woman has been posting, he's going to jump back on the grift train and start going against it. Mark my words, like Sneeko, like Zerka, like all these influencers, sad and pathetic grifters. I think it's worth noting exactly what sort of rhetoric this MMA journalist has put out onto the public sphere over the last couple of years. I can't even go into how many tweets I came across that were just deluded and mental and just bizarre and a detriment to our society. This chick has hundreds of tweets directed towards Donald Trump and her hatred of that man. When you hear the term social justice warrior, the picture of Amy Kaplan should be right there next to it. It is insane. I'm going to pull up one or two of the tweets. As I said, there's hundreds of them. And I think it's important that we show exactly the type of person she is. She's not some helpless little woman because she doesn't like that because she's a radical feminist as well. She doesn't like the idea of someone having to come and rescue her, especially if it's a hotter chick. That's almost like a little pat on the head, a little bit of patronization. And I'm sure if you dig down into it, that's exactly what she's feeling as well. She's feeling a little bit upset, not because there was jokes made because of her weight, but because a hot chick had to come and save you. Pretty sad, right? I don't know where to start with the tweets. I'm just going to start pulling them up randomly and you can make your own decision on what you think about them. Here's one anyway. Look right off the bat. Watched fans boo Donald Trump in his first UFC visit since losing the election. Has Donald Trump ever been booed at a UFC event? I don't know. Unless there's another social justice warrior sitting in the background flipping him the bird when no one else is even entertaining them. I, I don't know. Conor McGregor goes on a racist rant aimed at Ali Abdelaziz and Dagestan. So I guess Dagestan is a race now. That's intelligent. I had a dream last night that I was Conor McGregor's publicist and I had to follow him around all day to keep him from saying 
racist things. He was like a little baby that I had to feed regularly and make sure he behaved. Then someone ended his life was I slept in the next room. Pretty balanced and stable tweet, to be honest with you. I guess she's referring to the Black Lives Matter rioters tearing down the statues of America's founding fathers here, where she says the only thing that should be bothered by the tearing down of a racist statue is a pigeon. Are you a pigeon? And she's alluding to the American people that were perturbed that there was black rats running around tearing down statues all across America with impunity, encouraged by democratic politicians. Remember that? These tweets are going to be jumbled up all over the place. From every facet of identity politics and social justice and virtue signaling you can imagine, she hits all of them. Trump, racism, COVID, LGBTQ mafia, illegal immigration, far-right behavior, you name it, she hits every single one of them. And not with any sort of originality either. They're usually just like echo chamber reverberations that she's heard over and over again within the bubble of progressive nut jobs. So here she's responding to Angela Hill, the first African-American female in the UFC fighter. Nobody cares. Stop being a victim. And she's saying that fighters will put any non-FDA approved supplement in their body for a hundred bucks and then will post about not getting the injection. So we got to be careful with our language here because of people like Amy Kaplan who takes offense to that sort of language and gets you shut down online. Freedom of speech and all that. This dude responds to Angela Hill, he says, not by force, by choice. Stop spreading your injection nonsense. People have a right to choose. Amy Kaplan, the MMA reporter, comes in underneath there and says, you do have the right to choose. No one is forcing you to get injected. Freedom of choice does not equal freedom of consequences of those choices. Are you being strapped down to a table? Who's forcing you? This is something we heard Joe Rogan talk about the other day. So the federal government forcing or coercing people to take the injection was just something we made up in our head. So it didn't feel forceful when they said, listen, you can't go to work. You can't go into the doctor. You can't go into the grocery store. You know what? You can't even leave your house unless you do exactly what we say. And the regurgitated line from progressive nutjobs like Amy was, nobody's forcing you. Okay. Here she follows that up with another friend gone to COVID. Please wear a mask. Get injected. Social distance. Do what you can to save lives. Every single one of the three things that she mentioned there that would save lives have been proven to be complete and utter bullshit. Just saying. This was one of my favorite ones that I came across. This is disgusting. Hashtag NASCAR, hashtag BLM. And she links this page here. So when you open this page, you see this. NASCAR confirmed noose found on Bubba Wallace's garage stall on Sunday. And it was this racially driven hate crime. Of course, she posted this with impunity within the echo chamber bubble of these freakazoids. Did she post this article though? FBI conclude that Bubba Wallace was not the victim of a hate crime over noose incident and that it was just a piece of rope that was underground and you decided to go on social media and talk about how it was disgusting and blm and all that sort of stuff right did you post this article did you go back and refute your first tweet no you didn't because that's not what you do here she's talking about the injections again she's calling out paulo costa she's saying that he refuses to get the injection because it's an unnecessary risk to his body so again passive aggressive tweet because she's upset that he didn't do what she did and she wants to force him to do it but never to say it in them terms she has to hashtag the usc vegas whatever event was happening that weekend and put in the fact that he didn't take the injection which jake shields came in and went after her and you can read the tweets where jake shield goes after her and then she has to like burn back into her little hole and say i'm not offering any commentary on the injection i'm just reporting what costa said as you can see in the timeline there's lots of other tweets about things he plus other media attendees have said all right yeah all right so you didn't mean anything by it you're pro injection you wanted people strapped down to a table you wanted them forced to take it but putting out a tweet saying that paula costa didn't take it and he made a choice not to take it was this passive aggressive way of saying how dare you my next door neighbor is blasting God bless America. All of my recordings are going to be ruined. This is such bullshit. Hashtag UFC 250. Followed up with, I'm so pissed. If I had the time, I'd go rip the Trump flag off the porch and throw a bag of poop on the doorstep. Not even kidding. I hate living here. All right. Here she's responding to another tweet where some nut job has gone on about the KKK are taking off their hoods right in front of us. And she's saying, yeah, it's safer when the president isn't an unapologetic racist. Facts. Some serious facts been dropped by her.
Here she's responding to another incident in a private Christian elementary school in Nashville where children lost their lives because of a transgender nut job, someone that had been jumped up on SSRIs, anxiety tablets and hormone replacement tablets and that sort of concoction that really messes with minds and all you got to do is look at the statistics for these mass incidents and you will see it's either blacks in Chicago wiping out like 30 or 40 people at a barbecue almost every weekend or if we look at the situation in the schools you can look that there's a lot of gender dysphoria LGBTQ mafia type people that are perpetrating these but what does Amy Kaplan think about all that what would you say she thinks about all that all oh, right yeah the gender of the shooter is irrelevant in the gun control discussion here we have a picture of Donald Trump and Kyle Rittenhouse, the American hero who got out in the streets and protected the local communities from the Black Lives Matter rioters. And in that process, he solved a huge problem for that community because two men who were convicted were eliminated and taken off the streets by this young hero. Um, how does she respond to that? Oh yeah, yeah. Thumbs up if you're a racist, low-life murdering piece of shit. I don't even have words to respond to that one. It's... It's crazy. Here she's talking about wanting the entire roster of the UFC to wear a rainbow fight kit for Pride Month. But also, I want punishment for the fighters who say phobic things. We can't have everything though, can we? This is just a few tweets of this poor victim that Guru made a slight joke about the other day. This is the person that Nina and Bisping and Anik are all coming to the rescue of. Do we really want these people in our sport? But you know what? She's got more balls than Nina because Nina placates all these guys to become famous, to make millions, to be this industry plant who's front and center and is the face of the UFC. But it has backfired and it has backfired in a huge way. And you can call me conspiratorial but the fact that MMA Guru has become so big and so mainstream in the last 6 to 12 months seems to be scaring the elites at UFC, the people in positions of power. And they thought that they could pull out the Trump card, which was Nina, this person who gets millions of views over on YouTube. And that would be some sort of adversary for MMA Guru and the content that he creates. It backfired badly. She got smoked. And all it has done is expose her, expose Amy Kaplan for her disgraceful, despotic, mentally ill tweets. And also guys like Bisping, Anik, Cormier, they're all going down with this ship as well. 100% because the people know know exactly what's going on let me know your thoughts down below maybe hit like subscribe and share if any of this made sense i appreciate it cheers